Hi there, I'm Helen McConnell of HelenMcConnell.com, and this video is presented by Anderson Construction Company and ASI Structures for their employees and families to help ease your way through these strange times of distance learning and for those unique in-person learning situations as we reimagine education during the pandemic. I'm an EFT tapping expert, and I have worked with the employees of Anderson Construction previously, teaching you how to reduce stress as you navigated working from home. And I'm delighted to bring this technique to all the members of your families. So what is this weird tapping thing that I'm gonna teach you? First of all, let me tell you this, because it'll all make sense. The cause of all negative emotion, and that negative emotion can cause pain and, and discomfort, is a disruption in the body's energy system. Our body's nervous system is electrical in nature. And just like any electrical device, we need a consistent flow of energy to get consistent emotional results. Imagine a light bulb being plugged into a socket where the electricity comes in sporadically. The light bulb is gonna flash and snap and crack. And that's kind of what happens in our body when our energy system gets disrupted. EFT tapping is a technique that restores balance to this energy system. As balance is restored, we often notice relief, relaxation, and a reduction in pain, stress, and even trauma. EFT in this case stands for emotional freedom techniques. There are so many other EFTs in today's world that we just call it tapping. Tapping is based on acupuncture. We use some of the same meridian points, but with no needles, just the tips of your fingers. Tapping is a mostly self-administered technique. Even young kids can do it. A practitioner does not need to be in the same room to teach or guide the technique. We often work by Zoom or by phone. In this case, you'll follow along with these short videos. There's a growing body of peer-reviewed published research on the efficacy of tapping for dealing with a wide variety of issues. A link to the summary of this body of research is in the description to this video. So let me go over some tapping basics. First, identify your problem, your pain, your frustration, your emotional intensity, whatever you're noticing. And it doesn't just have to be pain or discomfort. Sometimes it's a fear of a test or inability to get myself to do something. If you can identify the problem in yourself, not in someone else, in yourself, there's a good chance tapping can help you get some relief or actually take care of it permanently. So measure the intensity of the discomfort or problem that you've identified. More specific you can be, usually the better. You're gonna use a zero to 10 scale with 10 being the most intense. I'll use a headache on the right side of my head at a six intensity as kind of an example as I walk through this. Now the next step, you make a setup statement that includes your emotion or discomfort and a phrase, I accept myself. As you tune in to your actual discomfort, wait until you start to get a headache and then use this. And you might say something like, even though I have this headache, I accept myself. You can say that statement while tapping on the side of your hand. Um, you can say it up to three times. The third step is to tap on the meridian points with your fingertips while stating a reminder phrase. A reminder phrase is a short phrase that reminds you what you're tapping on. And you're gonna go through these points that are listed here. You're gonna start, as I said, with the side of the hand. I'll, let's just try it with that, that headache situations. Tap, and you can tap with me. Doesn't matter if you have a headache right now, just tap so you can learn how this works. Tap on the side of the hand, on the fleshy side of your hand, between your wrist and your finger joint. You tap and say, even though I have this headache, I accept myself, or you can say, I deeply and completely accept myself. 
And then you go to the top of the head with a reminder phrase, just the phrase something like, this headache on the inner eyebrow, this headache, side of the eye, this headache under the eye, this headache on the right side of my head or wherever it might be, under the nose, this headache, on the chin, this headache, collarbone, this headache, under the arm, this headache. It sounds redundant and repetitive, but it really does work. And that's one round, side of the hand through all the points, that's one round of tapping. So after that, we stop and check for results. So I generally, after each round of tapping, re-rate the intensity, or I have my client re-rate the intensity of the original discomfort, whatever it was, using that same scale, focusing in on the same discomfort or problem or whatever it is. For young children, you can use something besides the zero to 10 scale, because that's really confusing. Um, use a small, medium, and large scale, or hands this wide scale. And for many young kids, the fact that they simply feel better is enough. No need to get a measurement. You don't have to get too detailed with kids. Oftentimes they just feel better and run off and play or brighten up. And here's a little insight. If you tap two or three rounds on yourself with very little movement and intensity, it doesn't go up or down, or it just goes up one or down one, each time, it's likely that the target of the tapping needs to be different. Try changing the target slightly. For example, if you've been tapping for this headache and it's not moving, try asking yourself, what does this pain in my head keep me from? And tap on that. For example, even though this headache keeps me from going hiking, I deeply and completely accept myself. Or even though this headache keeps me from finishing my work, I deeply and completely accept myself and then go through the whole round and check again. And here's a little note, as simple as tapping is, there is an art to it that may not come to you overnight or, or ever. And that's okay because you're gonna use tapping just for yourself. You'll likely get results anyway. It's so forgiving, it's so generous and it works so well. Be as specific as possible and measure any changes in your discomforts. And if the statement, I accept myself, even though, or even though, blah, 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 I accept myself, if it doesn't feel true to you, that one, I want you to say anyway, this is an important part of the emotional freedom techniques process. Once you learn the basics of tapping, I encourage you to use it for as many things as you can. You, it doesn't take very long, as you'll see, once you get the hang of it and you don't have to hear me jabbering about it. It just takes a, a few minutes to do a round or two of tapping and sometimes can completely take care of something. So I encourage you to use it often on many topics. The numbers are really, really helpful. They're super helpful because a lot of times people say, oh, it's gone. And I will say, what number would you give it? And they, would say, they might say a two or a four. And that's not really gone. It's just partway gone. Use the numbers so you can be as accurate as possible, especially for adults and high schoolers. The younger kids, they don't necessarily need numbers. And I realize that every household is different. Some of you have one child at home, two parents at home. Some of you have four kids at home, one parent at home. Some of you have preschoolers and high schoolers in the same house. Some of you have four kids all in the same age range. I mean, everybody's different. And so... So adapt this technique to whatever you've got going. So people tell me all kinds of things that they're frustrated about or that they don't understand or that they're having a hard time with. One thing's consistent is we weren't really prepared for this, unless you're already homeschooling your kids. Okay. But if, you, if your situation has changed at all during the pandemic, you might be feeling some pretty unique emotions. Maybe you're feeling emotions that you normally hide or you you normally got out of the house enough to dissipate your emotions but uh, now we're home with our feelings and with our families as you can see tapping is so simple but it is really powerful i want you to keep trying it till you understand how powerful it is i have taught this technique literally to thousands of people including school-aged children 
middle-aged kids, high schoolers, first responders, inmates at the men's high security penitentiary in Salem, people in the corporate world, like corporate managers and executives, nurses, doctors, therapists, and more. Remember, you won't get it wrong. It doesn't take long and the results can be measured. And here's the thing. If you, if you feel like you might be doing it wrong, don't worry, you're not going to hurt yourself, okay? It doesn't, you, there are no known negative side effects to this. The very worst you're doing is tapping on the wrong place or saying the wrong words. It still might work. So be really gentle with yourself. I invite you to peruse the titles in this series of videos to see what might be right for you. We've divided them into sections, parents, high schoolers, middle schoolers, and younger kids. And it's our recommendation that parents and high schoolers can watch all the videos, while middle schoolers should be encouraged to watch middle schoolers only, and younger kids watch only their specific videos, because we use different wording for different age kids and different topics for different age kids. And for the younger kids, not only do we use different wording, but sometimes we recommend using a surrogate tapping stuffed animal. A child can tap on their stuffed animal with your help and and they can still get the results. I know that sounds a little weird, but it is very true. The results of tapping are usually permanent, at least at some level. I have seen permanent relief from chronic pain and tension. I've seen permanent resolution of trauma and permanent shifts in people's relationships, creativity, finances, and more. I've seen some of these things happen in very short order and other things take longer. It depends on the person. It depends on what words you use. It depends on the issue you're tapping on. And um, we, we all get what we call secondary benefits from anything that's bothering us. You may not realize that, but there is your body is providing you with oftentimes a distraction or it's communicating with you about something. So don't give up on tapping if it doesn't work the first time. I have never seen anybody who this doesn't work at all for. If you use the tapping, if you use the script, you use the tapping points and you do it and you do it consistently, it will work. Um, when you're tapping on, at home on your own, you may find you get relief from stress on Monday and that it's back on Tuesday. This isn't because tapping doesn't work, but rather because there are more aspects of the problem that need to be tapped on. You'll want to repeat and go deeper as you're able. Stress is one of those things because it really is kind of a general sensation. You want to be more specific about what you feel stressed about. Be sure and read at the end of this the important points that I um, set up at the end of this video. I always recommend my clients get in the habit of tapping on the side of their hand or any of the other tapping points whenever they're feeling uncomfortable. And even if they're not uncomfortable, but sitting in a red light, for example, because your unconscious mind is always working. So you might as well be tapping. Tapping doesn't stuff away emotions. And it, you can never tap so much that you tap away your fight or flight response, your real fight or flight response. So don't worry, you can't really overdo it. But rather, tapping allows emotional energy to flow and move out of your body. For this series of videos, I'm giving you an overview so that you and your family can begin tapping and getting relief right away. I've been a professional tapping practitioner for 10 years, and I'm still learning every day. I hope there will be some of you who decide to make tapping a part of your self-care routine. Five or 10 minutes a day can make a huge difference in your life. Okay, what if I'm not used to feeling my feelings? This is a really common thing for many adults who tell me they're not used to facing and feeling and acknowledging their feelings. They don't even know what they are sometimes. So I say, don't worry, go slow and gentle. You can even tap like this if you're not used to feeling your feelings. Tap on the side of the hand and say, even though I'm not used to feeling my feelings, and you can repeat that, I deeply and completely accept myself. And I'm going to put in a, you're going to do it three times here. Even though I don't really want to feel my feelings, I deeply and completely accept myself. 
even though I don't even know what my feelings feel like. I deeply and completely accept myself. And I choose to be kind and gentle with myself and with everyone in my household as I learn more about feelings and emotions. Okay, and now we're gonna tap around those points using the reminder phrase, top of the head, I'm not used to feeling my feelings. On the eyebrow, I don't like to feel my feelings. Side of the eye, I've been avoiding my feelings for a long, long time. Under the eye, I'm not about to start feeling them now. Under the nose, I like things the way they are. On the chin, I don't need to become aware of my feelings. On the collarbone, I'm not going to feel my feelings. Under the arm, and you can't make me. And this is an unusual case. We're gonna keep tapping around. Just go, I'm not used to feeling my feelings on the eyebrow, but really things aren't going as well as I'd like. Side of the eye, I don't wanna feel my feelings. Under the eye, I'm afraid to actually feel them. Under the nose, what if my feelings overwhelm me? On the chin, what if I can't handle it? Collarbone. But what if this weird tapping thing actually works? Under the arm, and what if I actually feel better? Okay, we're gonna do one more round, top of the head. I might be ready to maybe give it a try. On the eyebrow, I can always change my mind. Side of the eye, but I might be ready to possibly give it a try under the eye, just for a bit, under the nose. If I don't like it, I can stop on the chin. So I might be willing to maybe give it a try. Collarbone, just to see what might happen under the arm. I can always change my mind. Okay, and then just take another gentle breath in and out. And notice what you noticed as you tapped. Hopefully this will loosen a few things up. Here are some key points to remember. With tapping, we always bring up the negative emotion, thought, or feeling. Sometimes people will say to me, I don't wanna say that negative thing out loud. But by acknowledging the negative, we activate the energy disruption and tap to smooth it out. We actually rewrite our nervous system. If we don't acknowledge the negative, it's still there and we haven't dealt with it. This is the least painful way I know to deal with the negative stuff. Remember this, emotions are an inside job. No one else is making you feel the way you feel. You are responsible for your reactions to your emotions. Once you become aware of this, your life will change for the better. It is not your job to let other people know this, except maybe your kids but it is your job to role model this. Begin where you are. Emotions are a result of thoughts, your thoughts. They're like electrical impulses in our nervous system. We attach meaning to the impulses and those become our habitual responses. Remember that. Tapping can swiftly change the meanings and update our personal operating system. If something isn't working in your life, this is what is required to change it. Thoughts are sometimes a result of emotions. What a circus that is. Feelings, thoughts, feelings, reactions, feelings, emotions, feelings, reactions, thoughts. It just goes around and around. There are lots of different types of thoughts. There are conscious thoughts, which is like our intellectual thoughts. I'm going to go to the store and buy these three things for dinner. And there are unconscious thoughts, right foot on the gas pedal, left turn signal on, foot on the brake, sound system on. I don't remember even driving to the store, etc. There are autonomic thoughts. Our heart 
beats, our heart races, our cells reproduce, our lungs breathe, our skin sweats, our brain works. We don't have to think those things into existence. They do it autonomically. There are super conscious thoughts when you get that inspiration to do something that doesn't make logical sense. And that leads to a series of events that you couldn't possibly have coordinated on your own. We have way more super conscious thoughts than we are aware of or that we give super conscious credit for. So that's a lot of thinking. Tapping allows us to access it all. That requires some practice. So I encourage you to use tapping for 10 minutes a day. There's a video called Recommendations for Making Tapping a Part of Your Day in this series. I encourage you to watch it. Our daily lives are mostly created from our non-conscious minds, our non-conscious thinking, and therefore are habitual, repetitive, and seem difficult to change. If you want to change anything in your life, you have to change your thinking. This is way more difficult than it sounds, and tapping makes it easier. Most of what we believe and accept isn't really true. It's just that we repeat things so much that we create a mental, emotional groove that's difficult to get out of. There is a universal force that creates worlds. This force is consciousness. Consciousness is what keeps our cells inside our skin suit and orchestrates the smooth operation of 30 trillion cells that make up our body. Yes, 30 trillion cells are all working together. If there's a mishap, it is usually because of our emotions. And then consciousness steps in to repair and rebalance the body system. This consciousness is all around and in us. It is the same energy that causes the planets in our solar system to spin and rotate and not collide with one another. Consciousness is what draws the oak tree from the acorn and calls together all the necessary components like water, earth, and sun to help it grow. Life doesn't have to be hard. When we get in the flow of consciousness, we find ourselves not working so hard. It's like a bird floating on the currents of air and gliding with the flow. We can do that in our lives too. Our goal with tapping is to experience relief and freedom and to get into that flow. Never do your tapping at someone, like your partner or your kid or anybody. If they're in your vicinity, don't tap about anything regarding them. If they're not in your vicinity and something is, and you are irritated about something that someone else did or said, then you can tap and get your emotional energy released and move on. If you're fortunate enough to tap with your kids, let them create the words and phrases. Don't try to fix them or make them feel better. That is a disrespect of their feelings. Let them learn to self-soothe and create an atmosphere of safety for them to tap in. For really young kids, we use simpler phrases and sometimes we have kids tap on a stuffed animal as a surrogate. It works amazingly well. If you're diligent, you can gain a lot of emotional freedom on your own. However, there will come a time sooner or later when you can't get any further without help. This is true for everyone. I have my own EFT practitioner who I work with on a weekly basis. If you need further tapping resources or assistance, please contact me, Helen at HelenMcConnell.com. Or you can schedule a free, no obligation phone consult from my website, HelenMcConnell.com. Or you can find thousands of practitioners around the globe at EFTUniverse.com. Be sure and look in the, in the description of this video for the complete list of all the videos in this series and their links. Or you can go to my uh, YouTube channel. There's a special Anderson Construction playlist and all of these videos are located there. All right. I look forward to seeing you soon and helping you get emotional freedom.